All right. So everyone, today we're going to review all the major steps in Starter from login, selecting and ingesting your files, basic arrangement and description, sharing and access, plus reporting tools you can use on day one. As you heard earlier from Michaela, these best practice steps were created based on feedback from our beta and early adapter users. Everything I'm going to show you today is available for free in the first tier of Starter. We do not expect you to follow along in your system today during the live session, but we will be sending you a file to use to complete the workflows yourself after the demo. So if you're watching the recording, feel free to use the pause button and follow along. If you haven't logged in yet, it's super simple. Because this is a cloud-based system, Starter will work from your web browser. We test actively on Chrome, Firefox, and IE, as well as mobile devices. And I will log in here with my credentials that were sent to me after sign up. And I'm in, I have logged in. Now, this is a single user system intended to get you started with preservation at your institution. That means one user at a time, no concurrent users, though we will make additional user seats available at higher tiers of Starter. Because Starter bootstraps you in place with best practices, which we'll go over in a moment, there really isn't too much to configure in terms of administration. It's really sign in and go with a couple admin features, such as the option here to up top, change my password, and a light and dark theme. Other menu options include the ability to expand my navigation menu, as you can see over here on the left-hand side, so I can see more information. I have a search feature, so I can find and retrieve all my preserved content, a dedicated link out to the support and user forum, and a button that lets me see the details about my preservation workflows, and we'll come back to these in a little bit. And of course, I can always log out. Starter also features a dashboard of reports that I can access by clicking on the icon or the full name right over here. Now, if the goal of Preservica Starter is to kickstart digital preservation and demonstrate the benefit of preservation to your institution, this can be a helpful tool to highlight on a tablet or share in a message to your stakeholders. You can easily show files that have recently been migrated to a best practice format, content that you have enriched with metadata here in Preservica, and helpful workflow reports such as recently uh, deleted files, um, a quick review of all the file formats being preserved with Starter today. You can see your previous logins. I can see the amount of storage that I'm using today, and a quick access to my resource library and a jump into my public portal. As I mentioned before, we do include a free public access portal, which is different than what you're seeing here in Explore, um, to highlight and promote your collections to your organization. Now, digital preservation is a practice, traditionally consisting of multiple tools to analyze and support your collections. Our goal in making Starter was to unify these tools into a series of routines that run behind the scenes so you can get started as quickly as possible with the goal of adding more options as your practice grows. So when I want to ingest my digitally born and digitized content for preservation, I can drag and drop or I can use the add feature. So I'll show you here in Explorer. We have the add feature here to add a file or a zip folder from my computer or network. And I will do that now. I'll do it by dragging and dropping. I'll go to my desktop and I have a WordPerfect file over here that I've had trouble opening. I cannot access this on my uh, computer today. So I'll drag and drop and bring that over into Preservica. I'll go back to full screen and, and that's it. So again, today I cannot access this file. You may have many files like this today on your devices that you cannot access. Um, you don't have the tools to do so. So the goal is to um, put that into Preservica and see if we can help you with that. You do not need to put your content into archival packages ahead of time. Starter is aligned to the Open Archival Information System or the OAIS model and will build your archival package uh, structure for you automatically behind the scenes. Um, and please do note that higher tiered versions of Preservica do support adding archival packages and also integrate with archival catalogs such as ArchiveSpace as well. The ingest workflow, as you just saw here, it creates notifications showing the status. So important preservation routines such as characterization, normalization, storage diversification and migration, as well as virus and fixity checks and saving content in archival packages are included out of the box and designed to best practices in digital preservation. 
Starter also performs full text indexing and thumbnail generation for you automatically. Starter can actively identify over 1,900 unique file formats contributed both by the Pronoun Registry and by Preservica's uh, dev team. That means Starter is able to identify or characterize your content automatically and then take actions upon that information. Note that the content is in my system now and an asset has been created which contains my digital file and also contains the descriptive, technical, and structural metadata that I need um, for the long-term preservation. So the first thing I'm going to see when I open this file is the metadata tab. Now the metadata tab allows me to edit the descriptive metadata for the asset that I just ingested natively here in the system. And I will show that workflow coming up in the arrangement and description stage. First, note the option for me to download my asset, to delete my asset, see the history of the asset, all the actions that have happened to this asset while it's in my custody, And I can also switch to a public view of my asset here, which we'll be seeing in the later section. The other tab up top is the preservation history. This is where I can see that my digital file is safe in the cloud. So to diversify storage, Preservica Starter creates three copies of your content in the cloud at three geographically different data sites, each containing three different sets of hardware as an automatic safeguard for disaster recovery. Starter will continually perform fixity checking on your content, and if there are any issues, Starter will self-heal a damaged copy from one of the last successful checks. And here is my original file that I ingested. We have here um, my WordPerfect format, and note that to ensure long-term preservation of my data, Starter will automatically generates preservation and access copies of my digital data um, to a recommended stable format, not based on what Preservica as a company thinks, but based on best practices and feedback that come from a preservation community, including archival testing, conferences, and journals as well. This is a major device in preservation, creating a practical strategy to migrate my files to increasingly stable formats over time to ensure data integrity and keep my data in the best shape possible for the future. So Starter organizes this information as generations to organize my preservation representations, as you can see up top here, and my access copies, according to archival research and scholarship. The preservation copies include my original WordPerfect format and helps to ensure long-term data integrity over time. In this case, as a result of the migration, Starter has also created an open document format automatically. And this is a format with fewer preservation risks for the long term. It has also created an access representation as a PDF. And this is what my end users will see in the public view when we get there a little bit later on. As PDFs today also provide for quality access and are easily accessed by browsers. Additional migration features, including the option to control and customize migration rules and to make additional generations are available in higher tiers of Preservica. Note that Starter will not make migrations for all assets, especially if they are low risk or if best practice preservation plans have not been accepted by the community. I can also see additional technical metadata extracted by Starter by clicking on the Advanced Information tab for each of the files. Note that Starter also generates additional technical metadata, such as permanent unique identifiers for each asset and folder, which we'll mention later on in the public section. And that's so important, of course, when we want to post these links into our finding aids or into catalogs, we want to link to items directly and to view those um, and render our content immediately. And speaking of rendering, I can always view my renderable content by clicking on the eye icon right up top here for my content. And then now I can access content that I may not have had access to before. I can also download other versions um, from Starter if I want to. I can download the original copies that I showed in a moment ago, the open format and the PDF uh, as well. In the rendering view, I can zoom and rotate images. I can watch movies, listen to audio, or I can scroll through documents like this. I can open up a table of contents legend. I can search the full text of a document. Here I can look for pollution and see all the occurrences of pollution throughout the document and highlight where those occur. I can go full screen or I can print the document as well. Okay. Now let's address the arrangement and description of content in Preservica Starter. 
your collections are already stored in a specific hierarchical structure, or if you want to organize and arrange them, starters folders represent collections, subcollections, or just folders to hold your content. And to add a new folder, I can click on the Add button up top here and create a new folder. And I'll do that right now. I'm going to create a new folder, and we'll call this, they just unload, uploaded a um, land permit application guide. I'll call this uh, land permits. And we'll call this land permits from 2010 through 2020, just for my own helpful reference. And I'll create that folder here. And I can then drag and drop assets into the folders and also create subfolders if needed to build out my collection hierarchy. So I'll drag and drop, put that into land permits and move content over here as well. And again, you can build subfolders um, in the system. You can create your and recreate your structures that you already have in your system if you wish to, to keep that helpful organization. And what I'll do here once more is to prove that, create one more folder and we'll call this my application guides that's really what this is is an application guide and i'll create a folder now right clicking on a folder will also allow me to see information you've already seen so far i can upload new files to this location i can upload a zipped folder i can edit the folder and delete the folder as well so now i have two folders in my system one for land permits and one for special collections Note that you can also, you might have seen this a moment ago, I can toggle the public and private view for both collections and assets in Preservica. So here is my special collections uh, collection. It's a collection where I have you know, various file formats related to special collections. And right clicking on this, I can toggle the private and public status, which allows me to control whether the content is made visible in my public access view. So here I have my special collections folder public to the world, as you can see right down here because I wanna make this visible. I wanna share this data and make it easily searchable. All right, let's go back to our land asset really quick. So returning to this, I wanna show you the other tab, which we um, reviewed and skipped over just a moment ago, which is that metadata tab. Starter supports the use of two metadata descriptors derived from Dublin Core and mods. And the goal here is to provide a way for you to get started right away and preserve as easily and accurately as possible. And Dublin Core is the standard, which is used probably the most widely in the greatest number of industries and disciplines. So I can go in here and call this the land permit guide. We'll give it a year, we'll just say 2020. And you can add as much or as little information as you have about the resource. And I'll save that and it's now saved and it will be visible in the front end as well. We added the mods template as an option to capture rich metadata here as well. So if you have rich metadata, if you want to add more advanced information to your uh, content, um, please feel free to use this and do so. Please note that if you're just getting started, you do not need to be perfect with your metadata. The goal here is to get moving and knowing that you can make edits later on as well. All of the metadata here is searchable in the default search bar, including any full text as well as Starter performs indexing of all your ingested content. So this is also searchable by Starter. All of your content can also be downloaded upon request, including your metadata. We'll have more about metadata in next week's webinar about Starter and metadata. All right, let's now return to the dashboard and I want to show the option to jump again into the access portal. And now we'll click on this and we'll go over here. Starter provides a public portal for you to highlight your preserved content, um, in digital collections, and the accompanying metadata out of the box here. The portal serves as a view for end users who would not have the professional access to Starter that you'd want them to, including the dashboard features that you've seen so far. So really after building, preserving, and describing my content in the Explorer view of the system, this public view um, provides features um, of the assets and collections that I've chosen, again, to make public. And this is what you'll end up with, a fully populated archive. Your public facing community can now see this in the system. This interface is designed to enable my users both a browse and search option for your content. As an end user, I can change the view from table view or card view. Here's a table view and here's a card view. And as you've seen so far in my navigation, Starter does support browsing your collections. I can also see where I am by viewing the breadcrumb trail up top here as well. I have a number of sort options. I can sort by type, title, description, and date. I can also uh, limit by the format groups as well. Uh, I have JPEGs in here, PDFs. I have MP3s and MP4s um, and more that I can see and expand. And we'll be adding more facets automatically over here on the left-hand side in the future as well. 
Now, I can also search within a very specific collection. In this case, I can search just within my special collections folder to surface content. So in this case, I'm going to search for one of my assets here on propaganda and do that search now. Oops. And we'll surface content that may be coming from full text or from metadata that I've added in my system so far. And here is an asset. It's a wartime collection published in 1944 from the American Historical Association on what is propaganda. And it's a pamphlet um, that's currently at the, this copy came from the University of Richmond um, in Virginia. Also a Preservica customer. All right, let's return back to our results here. I can also search my entire repository as well by clicking on the spyglass up top in the right hand corner. This will allow me to search all the different collections across the board. I can search for Douglas and retrieve content that might be in different folders. In this case, I can see the life and times of Frederick Douglas. I have a copy of the content here coming from Wikisource, and I can scroll through and read this um, book here natively in the system. The content I load into Preservica, remember, I may not have had the tools at the time to view the content or even licensing to view the content anymore, again, such as WordPerfect that we can see now in Starter. We have rendering tools for moving images. I can show you a movie here for um, ice maps from, this is, this is from NASA, the ISATS acquisition of Atlantic, Antarctic elevation. I can also see and listen to audio natively in Starter here as well. We have an excerpt from um, MLK's I've Been to the Mountaintop in the system. You won't be able to hear this clip, but I can click on it here and show you. When I click on play, it's playing the audio for me right now. And we also can see a really great um, AV viewer here as well, built into Starter. In this case, we have a copy of a letter uh, to Walt Whitman from Oscar Wilde that I can open up and see some, see some really good details on this content as well. And here it is. I can click on the letter and I can view it. I can go into full screen if I want to, or I can zoom way in and see some really good information that perhaps might have uh, escaped me before in this viewer. I mentioned before that every item in Preservica also does include a permanent identifier. So this link up here is permanent. Even if the item is moved to different collections and changed where it might live, um, this will always point to the item. So I can put it into a catalog or, um, field or I can put it into a libguide and easily direct people to my content stored in uh, Starter. If someone loves an item, they want to share it, we absolutely have sharing features. We can share in Facebook as email. Um, in Twitter, I can also uh, download and I can like this item as well. So if I like something, I can return to it later on in my favorites for the session um, and download all the items that I favorited so far if I want to. There will be opportunities for branding in a coming training. We'll talk about that momentarily. I think we have a slide at the end as well talking about this. Um, but what I want to show you here, lastly, is you might have seen this as a contact form, both at the top and at the footer. We do include also in Starter a contact button to enhance the communication with your users um, and yourselves. So we have a contact form that you can also have uh, promoting for your institution. So please go ahead and try these features out today. We encourage you to please go ahead and get started.